Let's see, make sure that's on. Recording is started. Awesome. Right. Yeah. So Michelle just said, uh, I am, what is it, two days away from my one year anniversary joining the city of Syracuse. So it's been uh, both a fast year and also feels like I've been here for a while, which is uh, I, I think a testament to the team of the city and, and our partners. So um, we'll walk through today. Uh, Renee uh, and Sophie, I think, are um, watching the chat. So we'll ask that you hold questions in, until the end or put them in there and uh, we'll address them at the end as well. Feel free to reach out to one of the administrators or myself if you have any any questions. So Commissioner Collins is not joining us today, but I think everyone on the, on the call knows him. Everyone else uh, has introduced themselves. Uh, well, besides Hannah Gardy, who is a uh, not an official member of the grants team, but unofficial as part of the crew and does a ton for us and so many other departments, a, a valuable resource for NBD. So the year 51 application process. So today we're gonna run through uh, the RFP, application timelines, uh, supporting documentation needed uh, in general for all grants, uh, as well as um, note that there may be some specifics for some of the uh, programs, section three, and then notes on, on funding. Application overview. So the application went live, I think a week and a half ago, maybe. Um, uh, the deadline is uh, October 25th, uh, 2 p.m. Uh, to submit. Uh, right now, we are setting up one-on-one -on -one sessions with staff. I uh, would ask that you reach out to the program administrator uh, for the specific program that you are applying for or have interest in applying for or learning more about. And for CDBG, that's uh, Sophia Fisher. Uh, for ESG, it's Sue McMahon, and for home, it's Renee Schwinnweer. And I just, I've gotten it right for six months, uh, <laughs> Schwinnweer. good, yep. <laughs> and Schwinier. I hear I'm messing it up. I apologize. Okay. Um, completed applications must be submitted via email. Please refer to the uh, specific application uh regarding who it should be submitted to some go to the administrator while others uh, go to the nbd general inbox uh, given the volume of applications we'll receive uh, late and in incomplete applications will not be reviewed and again murphy's law would encourage you to get applications in um, as early as you have them completed so that we have an opportunity to uh, go through make sure that you have everything and that you're set for the deadline November, actually soon soon after, uh, even before November, our team will go through and make sure that all of your documents, uh, all the required documents uh, have been received and are in compliance with the most recent board minutes, 990s and things like that. Uh, we will uh, engage with our, our finance and Commissioner Collins for the financial reviews. Those will begin uh, the week after submission. Uh, we will reach out if we have any questions um, and ineligible applicants uh, will not advance to the review process, uh, but we will reach out in advance uh, if, if that may be a potential or if we have any questions. Uh, the Friday following your week of submission, we will be sending out to our risk analysis committee applications and CDBG and ESG have committees that are really comprised of community stakeholders, both uh, other grantors, uh, really subject matter experts in the community around uh, our strategic areas of focus. They will review applications, uh, deliberate on funding decisions, and then submit their uh, recommendations to NBD really right before Thanksgiving. We're hoping to wrap up that process by, by then. And then through December, uh, while we refine the draft budgets, uh, the team internally will be drafting our year one action plan uh, as part of the next consolidated plan. Um, and brief plug, if you have not had an opportunity to submit your feedback uh, with our um, community and resident survey, uh, there's still an opportunity to do so. Uh, we do use that information to help us um, 
really keep a finger on the pulse of, of what is happening in organizations and in residents' thoughts. Um, and it does um, influence kind of how we put together the action plan as, as part of that broader five-year consolidated plan. And our last consolidated plan was pre-COVID, so we are really eager to see uh, individual organizations and residents' uh, thoughts about the current needs, uh, specifically uh, around housing. January, the action plan, along with the draft consolidated plan, will be published January 6th, which is the first Monday uh, of the, the new year. Proposed agency funding, uh, the budget will be in there, so that'll be announced, and that will commence the 30-day comment period. Uh, we have tried to get ahead of ourselves, especially given the holiday season, uh, and, and already put the public hearing on the calendar. So January 29th at 5.30, uh, we'll be in council chamber for NBD's public hearing to receive your feedback. We will, as always, be accepting feedback uh, in written form as, as well uh, during that comment period. Uh, February, the Common Council Neighborhood Preservation Committee will meet and Council will vote to approve our first uh, annual action plan for 2025 and the 25 to 29 consolidated plan. March to April, we are, uh, like Michelle said, there's a lot of new faces. I uh, feel very blessed that we are fully staffed in neighborhood grants and are working diligently uh, to uh, make sure that the timeliness of uh, our communication continues to improve and, and meets the need of our, our partners and the standard we, we set at the city. And so uh, March, April, we're looking to get award letters issued to funded agencies. Uh, and administrators will be reaching out to finalize um, uh, scopes and action plans, or excuse me, scopes and budgets, um, obviously all pending um, uh, sort of final approval from HUD. Um, but we will be looking to um, refine scopes and, and budgets based on um, what we uh, understand is the anticipated um, sort of final amount. May is, is program year 51 begins, uh, May 25 to April 26. Before the year kicks off, uh, we are going to have an orientation for organizations. I think this is something that maybe had happened in the past, um, in particular for new organizations, but really just to run through the vouching process and the reporting process, answer any questions before we get the program year started, uh, talk about our monitoring timeline and things like that. And so our goal is to really increase the number of touch points uh, with partners uh, throughout the program year. September to November, which is obviously anticipated, uh, you know, based on uh, HUD's responsiveness, um, and our contracting program administrators will work with you uh, to execute grant contracts and communicate uh, regarding the release of, of funds. Uh, we will ask that starting in May, as the program year begins, that vouchering and performance report, reports start to, to come in so that uh, as soon as we receive authorization, we can start uh, reimbursing funded organizations for expenses occurred. Application overview. So the it, there's no uh, new items. I know that last year there were three new items uh, re as required attachments and supporting documents. But this year uh, there are no new uh, required documents. So if you have applied in the past, in particular if you applied last year, it's the same uh, documents or required attachments. Um, again, please refer to individual programs in the application that may require additional uh, documentation. And if you have any questions uh, about this, please feel free to, to reach out. Uh, as you, we receive your applications, we will go through and ensure uh, board minutes are current, it's the most recent 990 and things like that. Um, so uh, please uh, spend time ensuring that what is submitted is in compliance. And if for some reason uh, the last few meetings have not been with six months, I would encourage you to reach out to your administrator um, and just communicate that in advance so that we are aware and that doesn't hold up your application. 
application overview. So section three in local hiring, uh, you'll see this in, in applications. Really, NBD uh, will monitor awardees uh, funding to measure uh, MWBE participation. Uh, section uh, three, city resident employment uh, and section three business participation. And this is really a tool to encourage um, economic neighborhood and workforce development. Um, and we call your attention to referring to HUD's exchange for additional information on Section 3. Um, if you'd like additional information, you can also reach out to, to us as well. Uh, agencies requesting more than 100,000 will agree to follow Section 3 reporting as required by NBD. Um, and so please ensure that you include all Section 3 information on the RFP budget so that your application doesn't get held up. Notes on funding. Similar to, to pretty much every year, HUD funding levels change every year um, and often continue to decrease. And there are more uh, participating uh, uh, communities. So the pool gets smaller as does our slice of, of that um, pool. Um, applicants are strongly encouraged to review all the RFP descriptions for eligibility, like I've talked about. Agency funding allocation does depend on, on HUD funding received. Uh, so when we share out um, our budget, it really is pending uh, council approval and then final allocation from HUD, uh, which often has some level of a, of a haircut. Priorities will be given to the highest quality programs that really best align with the city's funding strategies, and we'll get a little bit more into that. Um, applicants are strongly encouraged to demonstrate funding from non-city sources. Uh, that really leveraged CDBG and HOME and ESG. And then Program 51 funding allocations really will focus specifically on housing programs, services, and construction. So really a central focus on housing. And I know that this uh, is uh, a bit of a pivot from, uh, from prior years. So application overview, these are the, the funding priorities. So not only are we going into a new consolidated plan, um, uh, so there'll be a difference of, of funding priorities. This really allowed uh, NBD to um, refine its area of focus given feedback that has received been received um, from both organizations and some of the resident feedback, as well as the incredible learning that has come out of the uh, housing strategy work uh, uh, that has happened over the last couple of years uh, to identify um, really needs within our community. And that has, uh, and I don't know if Michelle wants to speak to any of that, but um, that has really uh, uh, influenced uh, our focus on um, specifically around the housing space for the funding and program year 51. Yeah, I think just to add on to that a little bit, um, and I think you all should have someone from your uh, respective team should have gotten kind of an email from me uh, several weeks back kind of outlining a little bit more what we're thinking with this. But uh, I just think it's really important to uh, underscore here that this isn't uh, an either or proposition for us. We're not walking away from any of the other workforce related or community based programming. Uh, needs that we have. We know that those are, are and will continue to be major needs that we have here in the community. I think uh, while the strategic plan helps kind of, uh, and the, the survey work that we do helps inform kind of uh, puts a very fine underscore on certain aspects of it and helps us uh, give a better sense of exactly how we're thinking about some of the implementation and how we can serve you better, which is why it's important to do. Um, largely, we know that these needs are big ones that we have here in the community. Uh, and I think kind of uh, we remain committed as a city to making sure that we're finding ways to resource both of them effectively. So I think our, our thinking with the housing is um, CGBG really is the largest uh, reoccurring fund source that we have that can be used for housing within the community. Um, so we're thinking about this as a means of kind of doubling down a little bit on some of those efforts uh, within some of our more uh, distressed and kind of low moderate income neighborhoods that uh, CDBG is really built to uh, address conditions in while also uh, identifying kind of a path forward where we can continue to resource uh, any of the community-based programming, the workforce-related uh, things, and uh, hopefully 
hopefully also be able to service them in a way where it's just works better for the nature of some of those programs. So um, it is not lost on us that the uh, bureaucracy that comes with using federal funds is not often conducive with just the work of running the programs and all the really important stuff that you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, we're hoping that this will provide us with a means of kind of doing uh, doing both of those things and um, creating kind of a separate uh, funding strategy through uh, working with the council out of city general funds so that um, it's we're able to do everything so thank you and if you have any questions about that feel free to to reach out uh, to either michelle or, my, or myself um and uh, like she said uh, keep an eye out for as we move into the spring uh, next steps with that as um uh, discussions start with council and and you know, move forward there. So I want to be thoughtful of time. We're already at 320 or so. So I'm not going to read verbatim, but just at, at a high level. So the funding strategy or the funding strategic funding priorities are around preserving quality and safety of existing housing, promoting affordable home ownership, creating new affordable housing, preventing and addressing homelessness, providing quality uh, housing resources and, and public services. And again, some of this is those sub bullets are are new or refined and then improving neighborhood health. And again, a reference here to the specific housing programs or services targeted for some of those special populations. These are also included uh, in the applications. And if you have any questions about um, uh, applicability to the programs that you're looking to apply for, please feel free to reach out uh, to request that one on one technical assistance. We're here to really uh, support you and help you uh, submit the strongest application to uh, the risk analysis committee um, that, that you can. CDBG. So uh, funding priorities, housing counseling, and then uh, community development based organization, CBDO. So priorities, you know, similar to uh, other years, even though um, uh, we're focusing more specifically on housing, it's still going to be incredibly com uh, competitive. Uh, proposals must align with the priorities and address needs noted earlier, um, focusing on housing programming, services, and construction. Uh, Priority is given to programs demonstrating 25% match or greater. That's something that's always been there. Uh, city's funding allocation, as we always say, is uncertain, but uh, we uh, anticipate, we hope, that year 51 allocations are expected to be consistent with uh, current levels, um, which we've seen off a bit um, in the last few years. There's been some haircuts, but um, that is what we are anticipating. Housing counseling definition wanted to really um, uh, draw this out. Uh, so if you're an organization that is submitting a program specifically related to housing counseling, uh, we really want to ensure counseling must include the elements included here um, that individuals in your that your agency become a HUD approved housing counseling agency um, and that you there uh, there's a certification uh, housing counseling and that new certification uh, those have really been in effect since 2021 if you have any questions about this again please feel to reach out to the team as well cbdo so cbdos really use uh cdbg funding to carry out neighborhood revitalization and um many of the community centers which would um had in the past uh certified as cbdos um are what michelle had talked about um we're looking at uh, additional funding sources we do ask though that if an organization uh, has in the past certified as a cbdo or has an interest uh to please continue to do so um uh Priority will be given to, to organizations and programs um, that meet those, those guidelines. Um, and if you have any questions about the CBDO certification process, um, uh, please reach out as well. Um, activities carried out by CBDOs are exempt from HUD's 15% public service cap. Uh, so that's um, uh, one way to um, add a little more um, flexibility in, in our allocation of, of funds um, 
historically a fair amount of organizations uh, were not CBDOs and fell under that. So you have, again, a smaller, uh, smaller slice of the, the pie. Um, and if you want to understand what the eligibility requirements are, please reach out to Sophie. Home funding and uh, CHOTO certification, as well as reserve and home entitlement funding. So home funding really is um, our HUD's vehicle uh, to support uh, new construction and uh, property revitalization. Um, and we included here actually uh, year 50's allocation. So for the city of Syracuse, uh, our home allocation provides funding for development subsidies and direct home buyer assistance, which is 70% of our allocation in 50. Uh, Chodo Reserve, which are um, organizations similar to CBDOs that have certified uh, to be a community, ho community housing development organizations with a central focus on uh, serving the um, neighborhoods locally. Reserve uh, funding for those uh, Chodos um, to help with administrative and, and operating expenses. Uh, our internal administration, it, it costs at NBD and then program income. And that's really income that comes back to us from uh, interest in things like that. So it's a pretty tiny amount of, of the overall budget. But last year, our allocation was about 1.3 million. Um, and we, similar to CB CDBG, uh, anticipate having uh, a similar allocation amount. Um, and wanted to share those so that provides a little bit of context about uh, the amount of funding that we're receiving at home and how it is uh, divided. Um, by those percentages. And some of those percentages are mandated either minimums or max by, by HUD. Want to be thoughtful of time. Uh, so community housing development organizations, CHOTOs, uh, they really are private nonprofits, uh, community-based orgs, uh, whose primary purpose is to provide and develop really uh, affordable housing for, for our community. Um, and it's a certification process similar to uh, the CBDO process. Um, as you saw on the prior slide, a portion of funds uh, are set aside specifically for CHOTO projects, um, separate from the general bucket of, of development funds, uh, as well as a small percentage of operating funds available for organizations that uh, serve as CHOTOs in space in, in Syracuse. Um, really, CHOTO sets aside funds providing equity to organizations to undertake these projects. You need to have projects, or at least one project, to, um, to be eligible um, uh, for CHOTO reserve funding and, and operating expenses. And again, if you have any questions about this or eligibility, please reach out to Renee. CHOTO reserve, this is, like I'd mentioned before, these are funds that are specifically uh, uh, earmarked for organizations that are CHOTOs. So um, they're projects that must align with affordable housing priorities um, and only uh, certified CHOTOs are eligible to access this reserve funds. And if you have any uh, questions about uh, sort of scattered site projects or other projects, please reach out um, uh, to Renee as well. Home entitlement, and this is really the larger pool of, of funding available for development of, of affordable rental housing. Um, uh, applications for funding are accepted on um, a rolling basis. Um, it's rental housing as well as um, uh, you know, owner occupied housing. Uh, City of Syracuse has an interest in in really ad addressing mitigation of lead based paints, um, specifically within the NRSAs, um, as well as projects that address lead hazards in rental properties. And so those are given a priority. Um, like it it says here, uh, they're reviewed on a rolling basis. So if please reach out to Renee um, to, to start that uh, exploration process. Yes, gee, so program requirements, eligible activities, and then um, the transitional program exception. Well, that's really minor. So ESG, really, um, they must align with local priorities identified by the continuum of care. Uh, ESG match requires 100% um, from non-ESG uh, sources. Um, 
And that really can be a cash or in kind, but it must be documented appropriately. Um, ESG programs must participate in coordinated entry uh, and adopt the housing first philosophy. So there are very clear requirements by HUD uh, around eligible programs um, and how um, clients are served uh, through funding allocated to ESG. And recipients must be active members of the Housing and Homeless Coalition. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to Sue McMahon. Funding will focus on similar to prior years, rapid rehousing, homelessness prevention or homeless prevention, street outreach, uh, emergency shelters, um, and uh, added this year uh, explicitly um, the homeless management information system. Since it is a requirement, uh, we wanted to add that in there. Regarding the emergency shelters, um, really organizations uh, that have had grants prior to I'm not going to remember the date are, are grandfathered in, but we are not accepting new applications, uh, grant applications for emergency housing. So rapid rehousing activities, again, this gets into uh, the regulatory side reference around street outreach, homeless prevention activities, rapid rehousing, and uh, really explicitly the types of activities that are eligible for um, allocation of ESG funding uh, from an entitlement community. Oh, see, it is referenced here. So only transitional programs who receive funding uh, under uh, fiscal year 2010, so quite some time ago grant, and met the criteria under the former emergency shelter definition uh, are permitted to apply. So we're not accepting new programs uh, that meet that emergency shelter need. And again, added this year is HMIS. And so uh, as a requirement uh, uh, to sort of include data um, and uh, in submission and reporting, um, this was added uh, as an eligible expense um, given it's, it's required of participating uh, programs. If you have any questions about ESG, again, reach out to Sue McMahon. Closing, carefully review RFP. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to reach out to your administrator uh, or myself. Uh, allow, allow sufficient time um, to pull together requests and prepare those supporting documents, uh, in particular, paying close attention to uh, the recency of, of some of those documents. Uh, refer to the strategic funding priorities in the application notice and earlier. And if you have any questions about that, uh, please feel free to, to reach out. Um, take advantage of one-on-one -on -one technical training. We already have a couple of organizations that have reached out, so I look forward to connecting. Um, answer narrative questions directly and concisely. Um, some have character limits, so we ask to not exceed that. Uh, there are times when, uh, once we start to engage with the risk analysis committee, that they ask clarifying questions um, uh, about uh, content and applications. And so the clearer and more concise you are in the application, um, often uh, the less likely they there may be clarifying questions that come from the risk analysis committee. But again, we will communicate along the way if, if uh, there are any questions that uh, are raised during the financial review or uh, when we go to the risk analysis committee. Um, submit completed applications, ideally in advance of two o'clock that Friday, um, allow for Murphy's Law, which does happen. I know uh, with some of these applications, the files get incredibly huge um, and our city system and sometimes your systems don't like to, to send them. So um, the sooner we can ensure that we receive your application, um, it's it's sort of a weight off of, of your mind. Uh, we will send a response, uh, just a quick response email, uh, acknowledging that we've received your application uh, so that you'll get some rest over that weekend or you submit it in advance even or Earlier. And then, uh, like I said, we will start review potentially as early as Friday afternoon and then uh, spend all day Monday going through applications to make sure we have all the required docs so that we submit it to the commissioner and finance as early as, as Tuesday, that, that week following. Uh, 
So with that, I will stop sharing. If you have any questions, um, reach out to your administrator uh, or myself um, and I stop sharing. Move you over. See, I do like move over. I'm I'm fortunate to have two screens, but it's on the wrong screen. So, do we have any questions from the audience participants? Not the audience, like it's a show. No. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we are recording this. Uh, we will share out the slides and the recording. And again, please reach out to your administrator if you want to schedule a one on one really conversation about your application or the program. And, and like I had said before, really want to support you uh, to submit an application that is as strong as it can be and really aligns with um, the needs uh, so that it is it strong going through the review process. Thank you and have a great afternoon. Take care.